First driver review. We are finally getting started. We've done all the irons and now we're into the woods. Let's see what this company is doing to break through that glass ceiling. All right, welcome to the McGolf Shop. Jim McCleary here, and this is the McGolf Channel where we talk about golf club repairs, golf club reviews, golf club fittings. Also, your scores can go low. If you would like, subscribe, hit that stuff across the bottom. That way, the YouTube universe gets more of this awesome information. <laughs> also, we got a live stream on Mondays. It's 1730 or 530 Eastern in the PM. And it's all the same stuff that we're talking about. It's just live. You can talk to me one on one. It's a good time. You need to join us. All right. So what is the first driver review we are going to do this year? Now, last year, I very rarely did anything, mostly because I couldn't review them very well for you because, uh, well, my driver swing was just absolutely horrendous and I didn't want to give any false indications. However, after a little bit of work, it's starting to come back. So we are getting started. So which company is it? It's the company that's known for their irons. They are superb in that particular category and they're trying to break that glass ceiling. What is that glass ceiling? It is to get into that elite position where when you, as much as they talk about their irons that you would want to talk about their drivers. Who is it? It's Mizuno, right? It's Mizuno. Now, Mizuno last year released in their 230 series, the ST line, the STX, the STZ. Let me do that for you. I can do that. All right, they, re they released the STX, which is this guy, and the STZ, which is that guy. Now, if you'll notice that the bottoms of these cores, and we talked about that at the PGA show, uh, they have a new core design or a new sole design, which has their core tech, which is the blue section in both of these, and the weight that they put in them, okay? They put the weight up forward in order to re, uh, reduce spin, minimize spin. That's what they're going to talk about. And then each one of these, based on where you see the graphite plate, will tell you whether it is a draw bias or non-draw bias. So this guy right here, where you see all the see all that one piece of, of graphite versus that thing going all the way down into here. So this is the draw bias one when it's up over the toe, and then that one's their standard one. So we'll put these back. Then at the end of the year, what they did is they released the STG. The STG is a 440 cc head that personally I thought was very cool in the fact that it eliminated one of their movement slots. So now they've got two. They got them right into here. And it's two gram, it's two seven gram weights that as you can see, I put them back here together, but they can be in separated and you have a little bit more flexibility. Now the, the core tech chamber on this one is not as pronounced in here because it had to make room for the slides. It's a 440, one that you would think that maybe the better player would like. And yeah, why not? Well now, now what we have is the ST Max, and that's what we're testing today. ST Max. All right, the ST Max, if we did a comparison, if you look at the comparison, the blue area is significantly different. All right, this is the max. The area has gotten bigger. All right, the area has gotten bigger. And then what they've done is they've added, they've added a, a much bigger weight to the back. They made it a little bit shallower here and made the footprint a little bit bigger here. All right, so the idea of giving you confident at address. To me, I don't notice the, the size of it so much because the style is very much the same. If you were to look at the top, this being the, the regular STG, and you can see my light in the thing, and you see that, this thing's bigger, right? It's just way bigger, and they've elongated it out here, and that's what they've done. Okay, so what does that do? When you make them bigger, the MOI can get larger and then it becomes more stable, i.e. getting the max out of the golf club. That's what that's doing. Now, what else have they done? Well, again, the large weight in the back, around 56 grams. It's got a pretty decent weight in the front. I believe it's in that 40 gram range. So there's a lot going on with just placement of weight. Now, if you look here, it is a one, this is one piece of graphite all the way down in here. That's a lot of weight in the sole to move around. 
and particularly when you got a graphite crown, right, with that with their paint job where it's uh, black that fades into the the Kevlar that's on the back, that allows you to move all that big weight. All right, that's why it's easy to make that happen. Now, if we look at it, it has a new face, right? It has a new face, and it is a it called a TI LFS. I'm going to go with low spin of some variety, and it's a forged uh, tie face. And the number starts with a four. It's like a 4,020 something. Uh, anyway, it's a different metal, and and there's a varying face thickness in here. That's going to be a thing going forward, I believe, the varying face thickness to help it find the fairway. Okay? So now, the last bit of this is, is the, when you put it all back together and you got a solid club, is the adjustability. Basically, you're good uh, plus or minus two degrees, right? But, but, and this is a good one, is that you can go uh, upright. You can make this thing go upright. All right, so the... The new adapter here, the new adapter that you've got right here, it starts at what would be standard. It goes plus two to the high, and then it goes upright plus one, uh, upright three degrees. Then it goes down, um, down upright, like a negative, like if it was nine, it would be eight upright. And then it goes into the lower loss. So plus or minus two with some different upright settings. That is consistent basically across the board. This is the adapter that's going to go into them all. All right. Let me put it back. All right. So, what is so we've got that. We got so it's a high tech golf club head. It's made by Mizuno, who just absolutely wants to get into the driver market. This will make their fourth model. All right. Their fourth model. And so far, every time I've hit this, the spin rate has been outstandingly low. Uh, I've always hit them well. I just never got them out very far for one reason or another. Mostly it's the bone head that's at the end of the grip. So now that we've got it going on, what are we using? Well, we're using a Kylie uh, 50 gram S from Mitsubishi. And it's a real deal. Uh, Mitsubishi makes a really nice shaft and with their stock grip, which is the Lampkin and this is a half and half where it's a really rough in the back and uh, just two colors. There's no cording or anything like that. All right. So let's go hit them. All right. Welcome to the, my very, very first driver test for the year. Uh, I'm very, very happy with the Mizuno Club. This ST Max was quite the pleasant driver to hit. Now, this is part of a golf ball comparison that I did. We had the, the Chrome Tour, and then we had the soft that we were hitting and, and trying to see what was going on. So you see I got my six shots, all right? And I had six other shots, and if we look at it, how it flies out there, there we go. It's kind of a spread, but you know, most of them in the middle with a yank this way and a couple of them going that way. So if we go back and we look at how it landed... Right here is where it's at. You got our three in the middle, maybe that guy right there, and then the rest of them. Those are my misses. That's me getting started first couple of swings, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take out that one, and we are going to take out that one. Now, I probably could take out that one because, you know, I like using three. So let's do that and just see what happens. So not a bad little dispersion, right, once you finally get her down because we like comparing by threes. Right, that's what we like doing, and and this is what we got. Am I down the middle perfectly? Absolutely not, but I'm still inside the fairway and down the road. So what does it look like now as far as the table goes? So we're about 240 to 250, just shy of that. Hitting it very, very well, that's a heck of a smash factor. Uh, 249 altogether, swinging around 95 mile an hour, which is middle of the middle of the range, right? And Everything else seems to be pretty doggone good. Now, if we want to look and see what we did, looks like this. So I got them going one in the middle, one hair to the right, as we saw in the landing area, and then the one I let go off to the right. So all in all, what did it do? Did it perform? Yes, it performed for a 95-mile-an-hour swing. Getting out around 250, that's a pretty doggone good number. Uh, the, the driver performed just like I wanted it to. 
and it you know with a little bit more practice uh, trying to get it out there that was the cool part about this can I make it better well, let's find out yes I can All right this is the optimizer from flight scope and this gray here is the graphic representation of all three shots. It assumes that somewhere in here I'm going to hit a 95 mile an hour shot. If I hit it dead solid perfect, maybe a degree and a half higher with a little bit less spin, then my 239 carry becomes a 256 carry and 247 becomes 265. I personally don't think that that's going to, I might do, you know, that's when all the planets align kind of thing. But let's just say if I hit it the same quality, but still hit it up in the air and still got it down, we're still talking a 250 shot. So, so there's hope for me yet. <laughs> there's hope for me yet. All right, so let's go back and see who this is going to uh, fit into. Okay, so we did a pretty good job hitting these things. Uh, we used a, a brand new golf ball, in fact, two new golf balls, and we figured out which one I liked the better. <laughs> and, and I hit them pretty decent. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not blowing it out of the water by any shape of the imagination, but I am making pretty good contact with it. So it's just a matter of confidence and when we get outside. Uh, it's not here in Ohio, it's still kind of chilly. And once that happens, we'll try and break this thing out on the real turf and do a real comparison again against the other drivers that are out there. However, I have to say, it felt pretty good. I knew that when I got one out there on the toe, that it wasn't very good. No, it was not, I didn't hit a toe shot per se, but when I got more toe E, then I knew where I knew where it was going to go. So all in all, is it an improvement? Yes. Is it, a, is it maxed out as far as keeping you in the middle? Well, I, I was inside 10 yards either way. Not bad for a guy who's not confident in his driver swing. I would say that was pretty doggone good. Uh, is it a, it's a nice look at a dress. It's very confident and your miss hits aren't nearly as penal as one would believe it to be. So if you're in the market for a driver and you, you, know, you don't wanna go crazy as far as price goes, these, they're, coming, they're working their way up the, the chain as far as costs go, uh, but it's a good driver, right? It's a very good driver. And they have STX, STZ, STG, ST Max. Somewhere in the vicinity, one of these things probably fits you. So if you want, Go get fit, make sure you get the right driver, the right shaft, the right length, the right loft, so you can maximize your drives, have a lot of fun playing golf, right? Having fun playing golf is when we make really good golf shots. All right, so if you got any questions, put them in the show notes. And as always, let's see your scores. Go low. All right, as part of the driver review, we're going to sneak in a hybrid review, the STX, ST Max Hybrid. All right, this is a little different makeup. It's a little bit more modern looking. It's a little bit more stealthy, I might say, in that they got the Cortec chamber in this guy. It's a different shape than the 230 models. It has, it looks as if it has some rails to distribute some weight. It also has, you can't, a metal, metal top on it. And it comes with the traditional link shaft from the UST. Again, with the adjustability in it, which I really like in this hybrid. This club is a winner in the McGolf shop. It is number, it, it, it's number one or two in the shop as far as sales go because of its performance. It is adjustable. You can get plus or minus two degrees of loft. It can go upright if you need more upright from this. And with a little bit of adjustment, maybe even choking down, it, it becomes a real weapon. Now, for the right-handers, for the right-handers, you really get a good deal here. You can get a 16 degree, a 22, or 16, 19, 22, and so on down the page. For lefties, we get the 19, 22, and on the way down. So if you really had to knock one out there, you can get a 19, crank it down to 17, and now you got a, <laughs> you got a club that's gonna go further than a lot of fairway woods. So that's gonna be part of this as well. Now we get back into the end of it. So we also hit the fairway or the hybrid, fairway, as we hit the hybrid, the hybrid actually performed very, very well. For where we're at, a 210 shot, 210 to 215 is a pretty good number for me. I was just a hair short of that, like a 208, 29, but in the beginning of the year for hitting something like this, I'm, I'm calling this one a win because I actually had a very, very good uh, quality of hit with it. So in either case, whether it be the driver, be the hybrid, I don't think you're picking a bad one.